Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm talking about the new film, The Atom Project. This is a film that you can watch right now on Netflix. It is exclusive to Netflix as well. Uh, this film does not have a theatrical run, but you can watch it on Netflix. Um, I don't think they're going to take it down anytime soon, and it is exclusive to their streaming service. But in this film, you guys, basically Ryan Reynolds plays a older version of a kid that we watched throughout the course of this film. Uh, one day while um, he is suspended from school, he hears a loud sound outside, and it turns out to be an older version of himself from the future. <clears throat> He's gotten here through a time-traveling jet of some kind. Uh, the jet is needs some repairs done, so obviously he will not be able to leave anytime soon. And so basically over the course of this film, uh, we find out that, um, obviously this kid is named Adam because it is called The Adam Project. Um, he has a father who has passed away uh, since uh, about a year now. He's been coping with the loss for about a good solid year as a kid. And um, over that time, he finds out that one of his dad's discoveries while he was alive was time travel. And that a business partner of his father's, who is still kind of on the business side of things, is trying to use time travel for evil agendas. And so over the course of this film, Adam and his older self, uh, who's you know more knowledgeable and stronger and has Air Force experience, uh, they basically team up. <clears throat> There's a lot of evil people that they encounter over the course of this film that are trying to stop them from interfering with this villain's plan over the course of the film. And so over the course of this film, they have to figure out what exactly is time travel good for? Do they have to stop time travel? Is it one of those things where even though his dad discovered it and people have found good use for it, um, is it really so useful to the point where getting rid of it is going to harm people? Or are they going to have to do it just so it, the future that they have um, when this boy grows up is not as bad as the one that the older Adam is now experiencing? So that's kind of a conflict that the two Adams face over the course of this film. But overall, guys, I really like this film a lot. It did kind of take me a little while to see this film. I believe this film came available on Netflix in March, and obviously I didn't get around to it until April of 2022, so it took me a good solid month to see this movie. Uh, but everybody that I saw that had seen the movie before I did uh, was praising it like crazy. Uh, even my own parents who saw this film before I did were praising it like crazy. And so it was just one of those things where... I kind of gave in, and I just wanted to see the film for myself. I was always kind of intrigued by the idea. I think there's even an old Twilight Zone episode where a guy meets a younger version of himself and things like that. So there's things about the concept that truly um, intrigued me to see it. Also, the film was directed by Sean Levy, who recently did Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds, so that definitely excited me to see this movie as well. And obviously, he's been involved with Stranger Things over the course of that show having a good solid run on Netflix. Um... But yeah, I really like this film a lot, you guys. So let's kind of go over some positives and negatives of this film and why I think you should see The Adam Project, but also go into it knowing that it's not quite a perfect film, but there's a lot of things to enjoy over the course of the film. So for my positives and negatives of The Adam Project, there are some great performances overall. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, Zoe Saldana, Catherine Keener, um, Jennifer Garner, all these people are really good in this movie. They're all, they really bring their A-game here. They really... You know, Jennifer Garner really feels like this kid's mom, and Zoe Saldana really feels like the wife of Ryan Reynolds and things like that. Um, everybody really gives a great performance here. I also thought the kid and Ryan Reynolds, whenever they're on screen together and kind of exchanging banter, I thought all that stuff was really well done as well. So great performances overall. It's definitely a performer's movie. Everybody does a great job in this movie. I also thought the idea of meeting your past self, that, that dynamic was interesting to me. Uh, the whole, you know, seeing your past self, seeing your past mistakes, seeing the things you're going to learn as you get older and become an adult. Because I think the Adam that is the adult, I think, is in his 40s and when he meets the kid in this movie. And, um, you know, he has to meet his past self and see kind of the things that he went through as a kid, all the bullies he had, all the flaws that he had as a kid, how he didn't acknowledge his mom the way that he wished he did and things like that. Um, that dynamic was really interesting here, and it really played well into the story, and it made for an interesting film overall as well. There's also some great action scenes throughout this film. It's definitely one of those movies where they kind of choreograph everything correctly, uh, from you know space jets chasing after them and things like that. 
Uh, the action scenes are really, truly great. Uh, they feel well choreographed. There's no shaky cam. You can definitely see what's going on while the action is taking place. So Sean Levy did a great job with the action here. No surprise because he did a great job with the action with Free Guy and his episodes of Stranger Things that he's directed as well. He's done a good job with those. Uh, so great action scenes here. I really enjoyed them a lot. And like I said earlier, everybody great, does a great job in this movie. Uh, all the performers do. They all have great screen chemistry as well. Whether it is Jennifer Garner and um, Ryan Reynolds on screen or Catherine Keener and Ryan Reynolds on screen or Zoe Saldana and Ryan Reynolds on screen. Everybody has a great screen chemistry with one another. You can definitely tell they found the right balance. Every once in a while you'll watch a film and like there's that one person that tried to go the more campy route. There's the performer that has the more serious route. And there's the person that has the more comedic route with their role. I think they definitely found a universal way to agree how to handle this movie, which I thought was the right way to do it. So everybody has great screen chemistry here, and it really works out in this movie. But for my negatives of The Adam Project, unfortunately the third act of this film is very messy. It has one too many ideas by the time the third act rolls around. There's also some ideas too where the time travel elements don't exactly make a lot of sense. Um, there's characters that disappear out of nowhere because the time space-time continuum theme is messed up or whatever. Um, so there's things like that that really don't make a lot of sense. Um, there's, I, I won't spoil it, but there's a scene involving a football catch with his dad that at the end that really kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so there's a third act in this movie that I thought was really kind of messy. So I thought that portion of the film could have been improved by quite a bit. Also, like I said, some of the time travel elements are a little messy here, specifically when you reach the third act once again. There's just a lot of things that you almost feel like the time travel rules that were used earlier in the movie are kind of no longer applied by that point in this movie. And I don't know if that's the film's way of saying that the time space-time continuum got fixed or the space-time continuum had to go through a loss because of these actions. So there's just a lot of elements regarding time travel that Unfortunately, don't make the most sense, and like I said, they're the most prominent when you reach through the third act of this movie, unfortunately. I also thought the film had more of a feel-good vibe over a message-driven story. There's just a lot of moments where uh, I feel like the film is just trying to make you feel good rather than tell you a good message, because there's a lot of um, opportunities that this film has, especially towards that third act that gets really messy, where the film could deliver a really good message of some kind, but unfortunately it's just more so about the feel-good stuff and making you feel good and making sure that you're happy about what happened to the characters and things like that. Um, so there's just a lot of opportunities that feel missed here because it's just trying to help make you feel good about what's going on rather than delivering a good positive message that the film had the opportunity of doing at the end of the movie. I also thought some of the future details could have been explained better. It really kind of felt necessary, to be honest. Um, there's just a lot of things that happen to Adam in the future that we only briefly see him in the future, maybe at the beginning and end of the movie, really. So really all we get to know about his future self is the stuff that he explains to the kid throughout the course of this film. And some of the details do feel a little kind of disjointed and discombobulated. Uh, so I thought that aspect of the film had, could have had more explanation, whether it's I don't know, maybe a dream sequence or him falling asleep, kind of like in the first Terminator with Kyle Reese and seeing what was going on in the future and things like that. Uh, so I thought more future details felt necessary, just felt kind of lazy, unfortunately. Uh, but overall, I'm going to give The Adam Project an 8.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed this film. There's great performances all across the board here. Meeting Your Past Self had an interesting dynamic with that idea in this movie. The film has great action scenes. Uh, all the actors and actresses have great screen chemistry, but like I said, unfortunately, the third act is a little messy. The time travel elements are also very messy. Um, the film strives for a more feel-good vibe instead of a message-driven story, and some of the future details felt like they needed some more explanation as well. So 8.5 out of 10 for me. I highly recommend seeing The Adam Project, so if you have Netflix, it's not a bad film to stream one night if you need a good movie to watch.